1 Samuel chapter number 16. Amen. The theme scripture is beginning at verse number 6. I want to pick up verse number 10. Amen. It's where I want to find a focus at on this evening for a few moments. Amen. 1 Samuel 16 beginning at verse number 10. Amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you would stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. On this evening. Amen. Uh, verse Number 10 said, and again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are there here all thine children? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Sin and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sat and brought him in. Now he was ready and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Amen. Cut your time interpretation. This is the one. Yes. That's good. Look at somebody and say, this is the one. This is the one. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I am the one. They didn't expect. Look at somebody else and say, I'm the one. That they did not expect. You may be seated. I'm not going to be before you long. If I can set you up for about five or six minutes, amen, we'll roll up out of here. All right. And people's perception, Come on here for a people's conception, and people's assumption of you can sometimes hold a person from moving forward. Right to the fire. Right. So, I'm just saying you know where we're going yet. Amen. Do I have any saints in the house tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Maybe it's word time. Tell your neighbor it's word time. It's word time. Tell yourself it's word time. It's word time. People's perception, people's perception, what they perceive you to be, their conceptions, their drawing of their conclusions, and their assumptions, what they have come to the final realization of, can sometimes hold a person back from moving forward. When someone disqualifies you, they will not include you in anything that has the ability to promote you. All right. All right. I'm going to say, when folk disqualifies you, amen, they have a tendency, amen, to not to include you in anything that has, it has the ability to promote you. Folk won't tell other folk you having a convocation. All right, now. Are right. you in this house? Folk won't spread the word. And you'll be surprised that folk right in the church that won't spread the word and invite folk to come to their own house. I want to go in this house. And then take minutes and haters in the pew. See, sometimes you don't need enemies when you got saints that don't like you. All right, now. I'm going to say that. Samuel, God sent Samuel. I'm just saying the word we're going. God sent Samuel to Jesse's house. Uh -huh. Amen. To anoint him. It's amazing how God does what he does. He's sitting there. He tells him where to go. He tells him who to go, but it does not tell him who to anoint. Right. He only tells him that one of one of Jesse's eight sons, Amen, is Amen, will be the next king of Israel. And it is amazing how God gives you some instructions, but not all. Now, it would be nice if he would tell you that folks going to backstab you for before you get to where you need to get to. It would be nice that, amen, that he would tell you that haters are going to rise up before the promotion comes. It, it would be nice if he would tell you that you're going to have to walk almost drown through the water before you get to the dry land. Amen. But if you hold on with the promise, tell me that I promise if I don't have nothing else. But you got a promise. And sometimes the promise will take you into places that it seems like you're almost about to die. But if you hold on to your promise, yes. mm -hmm. God yes. sends you to go down to uh, Jesse's house. Y'all be seated. We just talking. Go 
down to Jesus' house and uh, you, one of his sons, one of his seven sons or eight sons, uh, you are to anoint him for Israel's next king. The process, according to studies, was the process of anointing was simply uh, that a person uh, was to actually uh, lift a horn of oil over the individual that was being anointed. The process, and I don't really have the time to deal with it, but the process was a true anointing, amen, a true uh, a saturation of consecration, a true uh, uh, actually anointing was that the oil was to be poured on the head. And enough oil was poured and would continue to flow until the oil dripped off the skirt of the garment that the individual had on. Then the individual was truly anointed because the oil was spread from the front, back, side, and it would run down across the chest, across the side, across the back, and when it began to drip on the ground, right. then they were considered to be anointed All right, because the anointing process was saturation. My, my, my. We got a lot of talented people in the church, All but right. we don't have a lot of anointing. Yes. Yes. A lot of, yes. We got a lot of gifted people in the church, but we don't have a lot of anointed people. Because we got a lot of folk that's damaging the yoke, but they ain't destroying the yoke. I gotta go, I gotta go, amen. And so he goes down and he tells him. Listen, he said, go down, and this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to anoint one of Jesse's sons. Samuel was looking at something. He goes in. Now, this was a this this was an amazing thing. If you give me about 10 minutes and I'll be out of here. This was an amazing thing because of the fact, amen, that whenever uh, uh, Samuel shows up, Samuel was going in uh, actually in not incognito because he didn't want Saul to know that he was going down because there was getting ready to be a transformation. Uh, God was getting ready to shift the anointing off of one and put it on another. Yeah, amen. Amen. That means the fact that what leaves one, amen, leaves one vulnerable, amen, for uh, uh, the spirit. And so he comes forth and he walks into Jesse's house. And he goes in and Samuel looks at it. Now this was a good thing because of the fact that uh, they had trained for this. These young men had been training to possibly be another king. They were training to be heroes. They were training, amen, to be champions. They were training, amen, with the possibility of being kings. So these boys had not just been sitting around, amen, jaw jacking and talking and whistling in the wind, in the wind, but they were actually working out, getting themselves prepared. And so whenever Samuel shows up, he looks at the first son and he says, surely uh, this is God's anointing. But the oil didn't flow. God said, no, this is not the one. This is not uh, the one. And he moves on. And God, uh, he said, this got to be the one. And he said, no, uh, this is not the one. You know the scripture. Amen. But Samuel was basing uh, his choice by outward looks when God was basing his choice off of examination of us. And because they looked like they could be it, it was not the fact that they were it. Because God said, I looked past the outward. Right. And I looked on the inside, yeah. and the inside has proven it to be corrupt. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to replace one corrupt king with another corrupt king. All right. All right. In this house, I need somebody to break something up. Right. So yeah. Samuel goes on, and amen, in seven, the scripture in verse number 10 said he allowed all seven of, right. of Jesse's sons to pass by. And they go on, and they go past, and yet the horn of oil did not flow. Now, this is amazing because God's elect, when God had elected someone in those days of the Old Testament days, amen, they would come forth, and amen, and I said, yeah, this all here, and they would come forth, and when they would stand over the individual with the horn of oil, he would turn it over their head, and if they were the one God chose, the oil would release out of the horn. But if they were not chosen, the oil would not come out. I don't care how much you shook it, I don't care how much you beat it, it would not come out because God said this is not doing it. Right. Now, present day, this is how God operates. He says, I don't let any anointing come off a dirty vessel. All right, now, you can look good, dressed up with a back of colors on, look like you can do a thing, amen, and yet there ain't no 
building in us. Only thing, the, one of the reasons why we've not seen it is that the thing you are anointed to solve have not been brought forth yet. Wow. It's only waiting on the right time wow. for it to manifest. Yes. And then the thing you've been anointed for, can't nobody else do it but you. Amen. But in the absence of us, you wouldn't have any music in the house. Give me well now. So the anointing is to release a sign. And see, they just don't play from talent, they play from anointing. Are y'all in this house? And when they play from anointing, it drives out to a true minstrel, drives out to Yes. Are y'all in this house? They cry out to him. So let me let me move on. Let me move on then. Amen. And so verse number 12, amen. He sent for me and brought him in. Amen. And they said, You're now in demand. Verse number 13. Amen. And, and, and it says that Samuel took the horn of oil and, and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. In the midst. Now, some Bible scholars said that uh, they had anointed David in a private ceremony. But the scripture said in the midst of his brothers, that means the fact that they saw. Who was, listen, who was right. left out? Oh, Are y'all in this house? Yes. Now, my question is, and I'm getting ready to go, I'm getting ready to go. My question is, out of seven of these boys, why didn't one of them ask their daddy, hadn't you forgot David? Right. Help us. Right. Help us. Right. Look like one of them would have stood up and said, Daddy, you, you forgot David, didn't you? You know, we, you, that you asked all of us to be here, and David is a part of us, and why didn't you allow David to come up in here and, amen, and question the fact, amen, of, of why we don't have him since he is our brother. But can I help you out? Some folk who hate you and see the anointing on you will not speak up for you. That's good. Are you on this time? They won't speak up for you. They'll, listen, they'll let the enemy come in like a flood and won't even try to help build a dam to stop the enemy from attacking you. That shit right there, the containers don't ever want to help you. I tell you, listen, do you have, I know you got some haters. Go ahead and go. Are y'all in this house? Because anybody in the kingdom will always have somebody. Amen. There will always be opposition when you're operating in the kingdom. Amen. When you're always operating in what God called you to operate, when you begin to operate in purpose, there will always be something. Amen. Or somebody that will oppose what God, amen, has for you. But you have to understand that you are with the greater one. Amen. 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 I'm with the greater one. Amen. Amen. There's more with me than y'all with them. Are y'all in this house? Amen. That's why the enemy keep trying to punch on y'all. But amen. But they're more with us than y'all with them. That's why the enemy trying to make sure y'all back up right now from your calling and from what God is calling you to do. But amen. Because you feel like ain't nobody gonna step with you. But I hear to tell you this evening, there's more with you than it all with them. I'm not by myself. Amen. There's somebody always with me. Amen. And God has my back. Amen. Now let's go. I, I gotta go out of here because I see I see the correlation now of where God is coming from. Uh, because of the fact that, amen, I believe that I heard uh, that this is the seventh year, amen, of holy convocation. Now, isn't it amazing of the fact that, amen, that the number seven, because there were seven sons that passed by. David was the eighth one, amen, and there were seven sons that went back, amen, and none of them was the one. Mm. Wow. The number seven means completion. That means the thing is now done. Mm. Amen. Right. Are y'all in this house? So when David, the number eight means new beginning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so when David showed up being the eighth child, right. that means a new thing was about to happen. Yeah. Now, something new yeah. is about to step in your life. Yeah. Amen. That means a fact. Amen. Holy convocation of sanctified church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You're ending your seventh year of completion. Yeah. Amen. And getting ready to go into your eighth year. New beginning. Yeah. <laughs> 
Let 